So I believe the setup is that, that Professor Margulies is going to start us off. Okay. Thanks, Andy. I appreciate it. Thanks to everyone for being here today. Our weather has been a little rough, and, and today was just freezing. I don't know about you guys, but <laughs> very happy to be here to talk about this hot topic, which uh, I think will, will warm us up. I said when we did a, a meeting about this at the law school a little over 10 days ago that it, it sort of modeled what lawyers know, which is every day you get something new. Uh, and indeed, that was true at the time. It continues to be true because uh, I was checking my phone religiously just before coming in here to see if there had been some new revised executive order that came down the pipe that we would need to talk about tonight. Uh, thus far, at least as of 5.59, it doesn't seem like there's been anything. But who knows, the night is still young. Uh, as you know, what this is about is the executive order that President Trump issued uh, this is an executive order that deals with refugees and other prospective entrants in this country uh, or current visa holders. So what does it do? This order, uh, for one thing, pauses refugee admissions for 120 days. Uh, and it makes that, that pause indefinite for Syria. Then it takes seven countries, and those seven countries are Iran, Iraq, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, Syria, and Yemen and imposes a 90-day freeze on admission of anyone who's applying for any visa or has any visa from those countries. There is a question about whether it applies to lawful permanent residents, LPRs. The administration says it doesn't, but the order doesn't make it clear. To some extent, as a result of the uncertain status of LPRs, who almost certainly do have significant statutory and constitutional rights. This order was a subject of a temporary restraining order, that is a, a kind of injunction, by a district court, a federal district court in Seattle. That was followed up on Thursday of last week by rejection of the government's motion to stay that TRO by the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, the Court of Appeals that takes in California and a number of other Western states, the biggest Court of Appeals in the U.S. That court issued a, an opinion along with its denial of the government's request for a stay. Well, now the government has a number of options. It can revise the executive order, and I still believe that is likely within the next few days. That's certainly something I've urged the government to do. Uh, and I, I've been uh, joined by many other people who felt that's the most prudent course of action. With that, or maybe in, 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 in conjunction or substituting for that, the government could uh, seek en banc review. And, and that is going forward, too. That means review by the full Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. Here it would actually mean review by 15 judges of the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. The government could also go back to the district court in Seattle in this case, with or without a revised order. They could say, hey, we revised the order. Uh, are you willing to lift part of your injunction in light of our revised order, which is narrower in scope? Uh, or it could say, we're just going to go forward. Let me talk for a second about what the revised order would look like, because I mentioned that. And here it's useful to know there are really three groups of people who are taken in by this order. One is LPRs, lawful permanent residents. Again, there's a question about to what extent they are covered. The government says they're not. Another group is the group of non-immigrant visa holders who've been previously admitted to the United States. That includes students who, once they came here for the fall semester to attend school, then left the country and found themselves on the outside looking in once the order was in place. It would also include medical residents or foreign medical graduates from Iran, let's say. It turns out there are at least 8,000 doctors from Iran in this country helping treat Americans. Uh, or it could include employees of tech companies like Google or Amazon who left the country on business and then found it impossible to return because of the executive order or are here but want to travel abroad with the assurance they'll be able to get back. So, those two groups are very important. The LPRs probably have the most rights of those, of those two groups. Uh, 
current visa holders have some rights. What exactly will they have in terms of rights is still going to be sorted out. Do they have statutory rights? Do they have constitutional rights? Do they have rights under due process? The Ninth Circuit said yes. Other people have said no. Then the third group to be aware of is the group that is outside, right, that has not been previously admitted to the United States. That includes refugees who have been granted refugee status abroad but haven't yet been able to travel here. It includes folks who are applying for refugee status or, with respect to one of the seven countries listed, uh, are applying for some other kind of visa. So those are the last group. They probably have the fewest enforceable legal rights. The government's order, according to the Ninth Circuit, covers all of those groups. One question is, will the government revise the order to exempt at least one or two of those groups? So that's the posture today. The overarching procedural uh, framework of this, though, also entails recognizing that at the top of the ladder for how to review the government's action, you have the Supreme Court. What makes that more complicated is that that becomes a bit of a timing question. Right now, the Supreme Court has eight members, since Justice Scalia passed away, as we know, last year. An eight-member Supreme Court, if it heard this case, would almost certainly affirm the Ninth Circuit and deny the government's request for a stay, and possibly find against the government on the merits of one or all of these questions. A nine-member Supreme Court with, let's say, Judge Gorsuch added to it, which might well happen by April, say, would, I think, look at this in a different light uh, and might decide not to stay uh, at least everything in the executive order. They might try to pick and choose between one or another of the groups that I've mentioned. Right? Uh, and they might decide the government had at least some measure of deference for some of the things it wanted to do. Again, that isn't to say these things are good, but uh, that's just the way courts have tended to operate. Deference has been a hallmark of the way courts have viewed immigration and to some extent foreign policy decisions in this area. And it's important to keep that in mind as we sort out the legal issues. 